Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. And this is a new week and I know God has great plans for you this week. How do I know? Because he has given me his word for you. As you pay attention to what I'm going to be sharing with you this week, I know one thing. The spirit of God is going to be working in you and, and bringing the reality of these things I'm sharing with you in your heart and then manifesting it in your life. Praise God. Pay attention closely. Open your heart. You may be hearing things you've never heard before. You may be hearing things that sound, oh, you know, but listen, pay attention. There is a spirit of God. There is the spirit of God and nobody can monopolize him. See, he's a free, he's free. Wherever you find yourself, you can ask him questions. You can say, Lord, I don't like what that preacher is saying. Can you tell me the truth concerning it? I always tell people this. It's, it's okay to, to argue. It's, I mean, with, with, with what I say, it's okay to, to say, I, I, don't, I don't believe it. But there is one thing I would please beg of you. After saying, I don't agree. Can you go to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't agree with this, what this person is saying. Can you tell me the truth concerning? If you would just do that, if you would just do that, we'll all be fine. Praise God. You know why? Because all revelation comes from one source. But then, you see, in this realm, there are difference on difference in understanding, and then also there are there are communications that are not necessarily from God. But all true revelation come from God. Now, that's why Paul spoke in Ephesians chapter 4. He says, it will get to the point that we all come to the unity of the faith. He, he spoke that in faith because the truth is this. As we all strive to know him better, a day will come. You might be making mistakes today, but a day will come when he will bring everybody. Because we keep looking and looking, we'll all come to that same source and they will become one. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before we go into today's broadcast, as we usually do, can we make demand for our daily bread? Are you ready? Join me in faith right now and say, Father, I demand today my daily bread from your hands. And I receive it because you are my shepherd. I refuse to want I receive the grace that is required for today to supply and meet every need in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Listen, you've asked for it. Expect a miracle. Don't be like the one who will ask for something and the next hour, you will not even remember what you asked for. You ask for something, be expectant. Be looking out for it, Lord. I am supposed to receive the grace to meet this need. I'm supposed to meet the, receive the grace to meet that need. So, Lord, I receive. This is your mental walk for the whole day. <laughs> you remember what God said to Joshua? Meditate on it day and night. Meditate on it doesn't mean reciting it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. The Lord is my shepherd. I sh That's not meditation. Meditation sometimes requires questioning. So how, how are you my shepherd? And, and, and how is it that you being my shepherd, I will not want? You know what that does? It gives the Holy Spirit room to begin to teach. And let me tell you one truth. The teaching he gives to us, the personal teaching he gives to us, is, is what brings you understanding and truth. Not what a man teaches you. So that's why I always encourage you. Go back to him. Go to the You learn something, take it to the Lord. You disagree with something, take it to the Lord. In all things, take it to the Lord. It's <laughs> You know that song? Take it to the Lord. I think take it. Um, what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah, you know that? You know that um, is it him now? I think it's a him. <laughs> yeah, it's a him. Praise God. You know. What a friend we have in um, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Now, we suffer because we don't carry everything to God in prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want to show you something. Now, we've been talking about the knowledge of God. I want to show you something from John chapter 
17. John chapter 17. Very instructive theme. Now, why I like this John chapter 17 is because here is where Jesus was communicating with the Father. There is, I, I always say this, this is the most holy conversation you ever find, praise God. Yeah, most holy conversation you will ever find anywhere. Praise God. So, now, Jesus is speaking. Makupa rite vete nime sitilia. Verse 3. And this is life eternal. You know, no, let me start from verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So Jesus affirmed that the Father have given him people, okay? Yes. The Father has given him people. You remember in John chapter 6, Jesus said, no one comes to me except my Father who sent me draws him. Okay? And then he says, anyone who comes to me, I will know why he's cast out. Now, here he's affirming or reaffirming that statement. And then he went further to say that he should give, that means that I should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given me. Okay? That, that I'm personalizing it like Jesus speaking it. Okay? Now, and this is life eternal. You want to know the definition of eternal life? Jesus said, this is it. What is it? That they might know thee, the only true God. So this means there is only one true God. There are no several gods. There, there are many gods. Anyone you follow, just make sure. Come on, no, 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 no. No matter how you think, no matter what you have seen, no matter how, what people have created for themselves, there is only one true God. God. One true God. Please take note of that. And, and you remember Jesus. Well, let's look at this now. It says, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Wow. What is life eternal? You want to have eternal life of I want to live eternal life, God. You know that song, no? Okay. You want to have eternal life. You want to live eternal life. You, listen, it's not a height that you get to and say, now I have entered the height of eternal life. No. Eternal life is lived by the progressive knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. And you see, you must understand this also. Just like I said, eternal life is lived by the progressive. Please take note of that. Eternal life is lived. You, you may have to write this down. Eternal life is lived by the progressive knowledge of God the Father and Jesus Christ, who we call the Son. But I'm going to show you something shortly. I'll say that again. Eternal life is lived by the progressive knowledge of the Father and Jesus Christ. Now then, who brings this knowledge to you? And this is where a lot of people go wrong. This is where if you don't get this, you miss everything. Who gives this life to you? You can never get eternal life by studying. You can never get eternal life by confessing. Nah. Eternal life is given to you. Now, what is eternal life again? The progressive. Please take note of that word, progressive. The progressive knowledge of the Father and Jesus Christ. So, if you are not progressing in the knowledge of the Father, if you're not progressing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, now put a, um, a, a bracket on that Jesus Christ because we're going to deal with that. That's what we're entering into now, um, this, this week. So if you are not progressively knowing, now how do you know? I said it's not by studying. It's not by reading. 
is not by attending church services. No. Now, those things will help you in the neighborhood of it, okay? So, though I'm not discarding studying, um, attending services, but I'm, I'm getting to the real thing because there are lots of people who's been around the church for many years and yet did not enter eternal life. Yes, there are preachers who preach these things, but they don't enter into eternal life. See, I'm born again doesn't mean you've entered eternal life. That's a mistake people make. Oh, I've received eternal life into my spirit. I'm born again. Amen. Amen. Now, that's what men have taught you to confess. It's like saying, I've heard people say that a lot, but it's wrong. It's like saying, all he needs to be born again is to confess Jesus as Lord and, and Savior of your life. That's all. And, and guess what they refer to? That's what the prescription the Bible gave. You see, Paul said the letter kills but the Spirit gives life. If you don't see the Spirit behind the letters and you just receive the letters, it will kill you. Oh, the, why, why, why are you changing the scriptures? The Bible says, for with the mouth, man believes unto, the, the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you confess with your mouth. If thou shalt believe the Lord Jesus and confess with thy mother God, if, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, sorry, the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from there, thou shalt be saved. So, so, so we lead people to Christ. Say after me, I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from there. Therefore, I confess with my heart that now, you see that confession is not a man that leads you. You see that belief is not because what a man of what a man have what a man has taught you. There is the work of the Holy Spirit that if it is not involved, see, all the thing you do before the altar stands means nothing before the Lord. You can gather one million people before the altar and say after me, say after me, and none of them got saved. Don't deceive yourself. And you know it, you know it. If all the people that have said altar call got saved, tell, tell, I mean, the, the world would have been a better place by now. Because we carry millions and millions of people to the altar. Service to the um, 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 every service day. Crusades that have held around the world. Millions came to the altar. Think about it. On a monthly basis, all the crusades that are taking place. You now ask yourself, where, where are the saved people? The truth is, not all of them got saved. Yes, not all. Who does the work of salvation? The Holy Spirit is the one who does the work of salvation. Now, that's why I'm bringing this to you. Now, here you say, I said, eternal life is revealed. It's gotten by revelation. And the one who reveals to you what eternal life is, and, and it's not like a lecture. It doesn't sit down and starts teaching you. Eternal life is lived by obedience. And that obedience happens as you follow. Yes. So there is no receiving of eternal life without a real fellowship with the Lord Jesus. And this fellowship is done or is achieved by the Holy Spirit. We walk with the Holy Spirit. Because now notice Jesus didn't say, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, to know Jesus Christ and know the Holy Spirit. No. He said that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ. Now, he himself used that word, Jesus Christ. He wasn't popularly called Jesus Christ when he was on earth. You need to understand that. Christ is not his son. But here he's talking to the father. And someone say, you know, some people can just argue about everything. Someone say, hey, but he was he didn't speak English, so it doesn't mean, okay, please find us what he said. Help us find the language he spoke and exactly what he said. Now, the translators translated this because they, they saw something here. So now he's the one talking and he said that they might know the only true God and, more like I said, and Christ Jesus. 
whom you have sent. You see, when he says, and Jesus Christ, he wasn't referring to this man that is praying now. He wasn't referring to this man that the disciples walked with for three and a half years. He wasn't referring to the baby that was born by Mary. That's not what he was referring to. Yeah. He was referring to the word of God. Yeah. That's what he was referring to. He was referring to the word of God. Hey, so, so why are you not saying that? Reading the Bible, you see, that's where you get through. This is not the word of God. You've been making a big mistake to think that this is the word of God. No. Okay. First John chapter 5. We have time for this. Yes, we can. We can. Praise God. And then we'll continue tomorrow. First John chapter 5. Mashili better on Tavina Shaika. Verse 7. I want you to follow this now. For there, for there are three that bear record in heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven. Three bearing record in heaven. Now he says, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. I know what so. There are three that bear record in heaven. And who are the three? Now he mentions the Father. He didn't say the Son. Take note, he didn't say the Son. He said the Word. And the Holy Spirit. Now, John was writing this. Please understand something here. Some of these letters we, we read were written from the place of deep understanding. Especially John. See, John is a very careful writer. And, and he, he communicates. He doesn't communicate carelessly. John is specific about his communication. So that's why you see, even when you read the epistle of John, you find that, that there are certain communications that you don't find in Matthew, you don't find in Mark, you don't find in Luke. Yeah. Because John was deliberate to communicate uh, the, the truth about Jesus as he has come to know it. Not while he was walking with Jesus. No, as he has come to know it. So here he says, now there are three that bear record in heaven. How did he know this? By revelation. By revelation. He's not just writing what Jesus taught them. Now he's writing what for Jesus taught them a lot of things. Many of them they didn't even write. But then he's experienced God now. He's experienced the Lord Jesus the real him now, see. He's experienced him to the point that he can say what he's saying here now. So he says there are three that bear record in heaven and they are the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Now last week, I spoke to you about the Father. And I told you how the Father created everything in Genesis chapter 1. And I told you how even after his creation and when he rested, not one pin had moved yet. Everywhere was still dark. Yet he was creating. How was he creating? He was speaking. Then I also spoke to you about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was the one that came after the Father spoke. See? So no one will ever see the Father. No one has seen him. No one will see him. No one will ever see the Holy Spirit. But the difference between the Holy Spirit and the Father is this. The, the Holy Spirit can be felt. The Holy Spirit can, you can tell, you know, the Holy Spirit moved in this place. Yes. Okay. Now, because the Holy Spirit can, can, move like a wind he can move like 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 an earthquake he can move like you know he there are movements that you can feel 
when the Holy Spirit is, is moving, okay? Now, not all the time, but now that's how the Holy Spirit manifests himself. Yeah, so he, he, he can play with nature. The Father, the Father is the most silent in feeling, in, in manifestation. The only way you know the Father is by his word. Isn't that amazing? Now, John now says here that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So we've talked about the Father. We've talked about the Holy Spirit. Now, the next thing, and that's what we're going to begin to enter into, is the Word. Who is the Word? Praise God. A good place to stop here. I'm going to continue tomorrow. So we'll delve into this. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. Bye.